Hello and welcome to Rocket The Basics. Rocket is perhaps one of the best known of all railway locomotives, coming a close second with the Flying Scotsman or with Thomas. This is in no small part thanks to excellent 190 year old PR of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, and also thanks to George Stevenson's biographer Samuel Smiles. In fact, so synonymous with early railways has Rocket become that she is often considered to be the first steam locomotive and any early railway locomotive is often dubbed as Rocket. Rocket was designed for the Rainhill Trials held in the October of 1829. They had been organised by the Liverpool and Manchester Railway to find the best form of motive power for their new line. Whether it was to be worked by stationary engines and rope haulages or by locomotives. Despite seeking expert opinion and having visited other railways in the north of England, the jury, as it were, was still out. So in April 1829, the Liverpool and Manchester Railway Board of Directors offered a premium of £500 for the most improved railway locomotive. Comprehensive stipulations were issued, including the weight of each locomotive, the number of wheels it should have, that it should possess a proper pressure gauge, have two safety valves, and that it should consume its own smoke. In other words, burn coke, a relatively smokeless fuel, rather than coal. The idea to build Rocket came not from George or Robert Stevenson, but rather from Henry Booth of Liverpool. Booth was the secretary, treasurer and general manager of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway. And this was despite the fact that the Liverpool and Manchester Railway Act of May 1826 stated that the same person could not fulfil the same office of treasurer and secretary. Booth, the scion of a prominent family of Liverpool corn merchants, was of a very inventive turn of mind, and had already taken out a patent in 1819 for a steamboat, and between 1835 and 1837 would obtain no fewer than five patents, including the three-link screw coupling, sprung buffers, and a form of axle grease. And it was Henry Booth who also had the idea for a multi-tubular locomotive boiler. The idea was not new, as the Marquis Geoffroy de Abans had used a multi-tubular boiler in his steamboat on the River Seine in 1786. Another Frenchman, Marc Seguin, the nephew of the Montgolfier brothers of hot air balloon fame, had patented a multi-tubular boiler in 1828. Hitherto, there were two types of locomotive boiler in use. One had a large diameter single flue passing straight through the boiler. The fire was stoked at one end, the hot gases passed through heating the water and exited up the chimney. In an attempt to increase the heating surface, a return flue boiler was later adopted. This was U-shaped, so the firebox was at the same end of the boiler as the chimney, and this was more efficient than the single flue. But what Booth did was revolutionary. In the boiler design for Rocket, he decided to use 25 3 inch diameter copper tubes. Copper is an excellent conductor of heat, and by using so many small tubes, he greatly increased the amount of surface area for which the hot gases came into contact with the water to boil it and make steam. The boiler barrel itself, which amazingly still survives after 191 years, was made from the best Staffordshire iron plate. Usually, the Stevensons had sourced their boilers and ironwork from Michael Longridge of the Bedlington Ironworks. Longridge, of course, was a shareholder in Robert Stevenson and Company, but the Stevensons were unhappy with the quality of his products, especially his boiler work, so they turned to Staffordshire for their boiler. Sadly, for Timothy Hackworth, who entered his own locomotive, the saint in the Rainhill Trials, he sourced his boiler from Bedlington, and saint boiler was found to leak quite badly 
and this vindicated the Stevenson's decision to source their boiler from elsewhere. The second breakthrough was just as important, a proper firebox. Fires formed at one end of a single or return flue boiler didn't have sufficient space to allow for good flame development or a good depth of fire, nor was there room for good airflow through the fire. By providing a separate copper water jacketed firebox, Rocket's fire had plenty of space for a good deep fire, plenty of space for flame development to generate a hot flame and an excellent air supply. Thanks to the saddle shaped water jacket surrounding it, water was in direct contact with the hottest part of the boiler. The final breakthrough was using inclined cylinders. Early locomotives had used vertical cylinders. This was because James Watt believed that the weight of a piston in the cylinder, which was not vertical, would wear the cylinder oval. This of course is partially true, but the effect is not as pronounced as Watt believed. By using inclined cylinders, it meant that the piston could be directly connected to the wheel, so there was no loss of power. The crank pins on rocket were spherical, forming a ball and socket joint with the connecting rod to allow for movement of the axle on the springs. And talking of springs, it also meant that rocket could be carried on springs including the driving wheels. And this reduced the phenomenon known as hammer blow, which meant that rocket was less likely to damage the early track. Rocket also had an early form of blast pipe in the chimney, so the exhaust steam from the cylinders would help draw the fire. This was not a new idea. Richard Trevithick, who had built the first recognisable railway locomotive in 1804, had used a blast pipe. Rocket was built at the 4th Street Works in Newcastle of Robert Stevenson and Company. Robert Stevenson, the only son of George Stevenson, was then aged only 26 and he was the lead designer on the project. Rocket was completed on the 2nd of September 1829 and thanks to Nicholas Wood, the manager at Killingworth Colliery, she was taken there for running trials over the next few days. She was the only one of the Rainhill entries to have had proper running trials to smooth out any teething trouble. And it was during these running trials that it was found the valve gear favoured forward running. So the valve gear was tweaked so that she would run as well backwards as well as forwards. At Rain Hill, she would have to shuttle backwards and forwards as fast as possible between marker posts on the one and a half mile course to simulate the 70 mile return trip from Liverpool to Manchester and back. As history records, Rocket was the victor at Rain Hill. But within six months, the conquering hero was obsolete and out of date. It's unlikely that Rocket ever entered frontline service on the Liverpool and Manchester Railway. She's recorded during the autumn of 1829 and all through 1830 as working on permanent way trains. Famously, at the opening day of the railway on the 15th of September 1830, she ran over and fatally injured the Tory MP, William Huskinson. In November, she was involved in the second fatality when Henry Hunter, a local publican who had got into the habit of catching a lift, was killed when Rocket derailed. The 300 gallon water barrel on the tender fell off and crushed him to death. In order to bring Rocket in line with her newer sisters, between 1831 and 1832, she was comprehensively rebuilt. And this is the form we see her in today with cylinders lowered down to as near as horizontal as possible. She was retrofitted with a steam dome and an internal steam pipe, as well as a wet back firebox, so that the water jacket extended around three sides of the fire, rather than just over the top. She was also fitted with a proper smoke box at the front end, making it much easier to service and maintain her. After being out of use for a few years, she was sold in 1836 to James Thompson on behalf of the Earl of Carlisle for use on his Kirkhouse Colliery Railway, where, pulling trains of coal wagons, she was involved in the third fatality, killing a young colliery lad. Laid up in 1840, Rocket was then the subject of a protracted property dispute which rattled on for several years. Finally, in 1862, she was presented to what is today the Science Museum. 
So those are the basics on Rocket. Please like and subscribe and comment below. If you would like to find out more about Rocket, check out my book, The Rainhill Trials by Amberley Publishing.